In this video, I want to show you guys how to take your projects to the next bevel. Bevel? The next level. Take your projects to the next level by adding a bevel. So stick around. A pretty standard practice with woodworking is to add a bevel to your project. There are two main types of bevels. You can do a round over, which is a slightly rounded edge there, or you can do a chamfer, which is typically a 45 degree angle on your corner. This bit here, this will give you a round over. As you can see right there, it's got a nice gradual round. It will follow a ball bearing. So this would basically sit in your palm router because it is a quarter inch bit and you would just trace out your project and that would create just that small cove right there and it'll give it the effect that you're looking for. This bit here is a bigger bit. This would go in a router table. You would have your table set here and you would flip your project over and you would run your project against this bearing and this would give it that 45 degree chamfer. There are four main reasons why you would want to bevel your project. The first reason is that it will protect your project from chipping. If you have a blunt 90 degree corner and something hits it or it hits something, those fibers on the top of your project, they're gonna wanna split off. There's nothing behind that holding those fibers on there. So just like when you're running something on a router table or a table saw, you wanna have a backup board. It's the same concept. There is no backup board on the top of your project. So when it gets hit or bumped, those fibers, they're gonna chip. Reason number two to bevel your projects is that they're gonna look lighter. Visually, they're gonna look just a little bit softer and you're gonna end up with a much better finished product. Reason number three, it's just gonna feel better in the hand. You're not gonna have those blunt 90 degree corners that your hand is gonna have to round over when you transition from surface to surface. Also, those 90 degree corners can be sharp. I've gotten cut on them before, and I bet you probably have too. The fourth and final reason to add a bevel to your project is it makes it look like you took that extra step, because you did. It looks like you've created something that you would want to hold, that you would want to use, and now you are either gifting it to somebody or you are selling it to a customer. The final product will be much better with these bevels. It will look better, it will feel better, and it will look like you've given 100% effort into these projects. These projects can take a long time. They can take a lot of effort. And if you take this little extra step, it'll take your project to the next level. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're getting value from this content, please hit that subscribe button. And if you've already done both, thank you very much. You can help a small channel like mine grow. Leave something down in the comments. Let me know if you have a tip or a trick that you have picked up along the way and that you can share with the community and myself. So I've come up with this drawing here. You can see I've spent hours and hours on this. I figured an incredibly close up view of this would help explain my point just a little bit better. This object here on the left, this is just your standard square edge with, with your 90 degree corner there. If you have an object and it's coming in, it's gonna wanna hit this corner and dig in. Because there's no support behind this corner right here, this corner is either gonna chip off or all these fibers here along the top of your project are gonna wanna start to peel off and chip up it's gonna ruin your corner. It's gonna look all rough and gnarly, and you don't want that. Two ways to avoid that is either put a chamfer on your corner or a round over. They're both gonna accomplish the same thing. Your chamfer, that is your, basically it's a 135 degree angle, which is a 45 degree angle in this direction. Same object coming up at the same angle, it's gonna hit. And instead of digging in, it's just going to want to glance off. It's not going to want to dig into there because it wants to go in the path of least resistance, which is up into the open air. So it's going to hit and glance off. 
Same thing as the round over. It's going to hit and it's going to glance off. It's not going to dig in like it would over here in your square edge. So if you add one of these two, a chamfer or a round over, it's going to further protect the top of your project. So now that we've established what a bevel is and why you want these on your projects, I'm going to show you an incredibly easy way to make that happen. The file that I'm going to use to demonstrate this is very simple. It's just a snowflake. I've just copied it and pasted it. So now I have two on this workpiece. It's about 12 by 12. That's plenty big for this example here. These are both going to be full cuts. They are going to be with an eighth inch bit. And my piece of plywood, it's Baltic birch, is half an inch thick. So I've got my workpiece all set up here. I've got my bit set up. And then I've got all my depth set up. So this is going to be the second pass that I run. The first pass is this one right here. This is the exact same snowflake as this one right here in the upper right corner. Just copied it and pasted it in this new workpiece here. The only difference between these files now is this snowflake is going to be cut with a 60 degree V bit. You can see I got it selected right here. So what this is going to do is leave just a slight bevel here. You can see that there. And I've only set my depth to about an eighth of an inch. So all this is going to do is it's going to run through here. It's going to cut down an eighth of an inch with this bevel. Then when you go back through and you run your cutout pass or your perimeter pass, what that's going to do is that's going to come right down here in the valley because center of your 60 degree V bit is going to be the same as the center of your end mill. That's going to come right down here in the center of this valley and it's going to cut down and it's going to do a standard perimeter cut. But now as you see, you're going to be left with just this little bit of bevel on top of your project. So I'm going to set this up on the CNC. Again, I'm going to run this pass first with my 60 degree V bit. Then I will switch bits over to my eighth inch end mill. Then I'm going to run this file, two identical snowflakes here, both cut all the way through, and I will show you guys the results. So I've got my wasteboard set up. I've got my 60 degree V bit right there. I'm going to run this first file. This first file, it's not going to take long, only I think two minutes. So all that did was run a very shallow pass and it carved a 60 degree angle in there. So now when the eighth inch bit runs down there, your snowflake or whatever your file is, it will be pre-beveled so you don't have to take this over to a router table or hand sand it or do anything like that. So I'm going to switch out bits and then I will cut both profiles and I'll show you the results. Now that the CNC is finished, I will get my router out of the way and I will give you guys just a, a quick close up. So as you can see, this is the one without the chamfer. These edges here are a crisp 90 degree. And if you come over to here, you can see there is just the most slight chamfer slight round over right there i'm going to pop these off give them a quick sand and then i will give you a side by side comparison so you guys can see what i'm talking about so here's a close-up comparison this snowflake here on the left 
you can see this crisp edge right there across the top. The snowflake on the right, this has the 60 degree chamfer. And you can vary this up. If you want this chamfer to be more dramatic, you can make your first pass a little bit deeper. Um, this one was made with a 60 degree V-bit. So this angle is only 30 degrees. If you wanted something more dramatic, again, you could use a 90 degree V-bit, which would make this angle 45. And you could play around, kind of figure out what you like the best. But this is going to give you the example. You can see these corners here are softer. That's going to feel better in the hand. It's not going to be sharp. It's not going to snag on anything. So if you cut this snowflake out like this, and then you wanted to add your bevel afterwards, that would be almost impossible. These bits here, even as small as they are, they cannot get into those tight corners. So sure, you might be able to do a couple of these edges here, but again, you're stuck here. You're not able to get into that corner. So then you would have a machine bevel in certain areas. Then you would have to take a piece of sandpaper and you would have to get into those tight corners there. You're not going to get a consistent bevel and it's going to take you a long time. So if you end up beveling at first, you end up with this, a much better product.